think he's a president and he's a leader of the blacks. Thank you. Not bad, not bad. Close. Who else knows about Marcus Garvey? Nobody? Who? You know? Alright, so let me tell you a little bit about Marcus Garvey. So, he's originally from Jamaica, yeah? Born in the year 1887, right? And this was at a time whereby us, in terms of blacks, were considered as first founders and say, wretched of the earth, right? But Marcus Garvey believed that we need us to be a strong race, right? We need, to, we need to have our own things. So he's what you call the father of Pan-Africanism. So, he inspired most of the 20, um, 21st century thought leaders. Martin Luther King, Kwame Nkrumah, who else? Who could name somebody else? Lady Selassie. who else? Who else? Malcolm X. Who else? Stokely Carmichael. Who else? Do you, do you guys know all these people? You know some, you don't know some. So these are some of the things that we need to learn about our own leadership and the people who inspired to fight for the race and to fight for in terms of being a strong race. Yeah? All right. So we'll first introduce the universal family. Universal family, you ready? So we introduce the universal family. Listen. Let's give them a round of applause. Universal family. We give thanks for our great great grandmothers and our great great grandfathers, the ancestors of this land, all of you beautiful, bright people for coming out today. We ask that this program enliven in you with the spirit of collective work and responsibility, of cooperative economics. So may our day today be fruitful, prosperous, and abundant. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. Ashe, Ashe.
Today at my great RPG event, I am coming to give my speech about 10 things invented by black people that makes our everyday life easy. The first thing that I came up with was folding chairs made by John Prude. And as you can see, folding chairs is a good uh, way that you can sit down. It's easily transported and it can be functional anywhere, even in small spaces. The modern toilets, back in the olden days, you could go to the bush and you could do your business. But now the modern toilet, as you can see, it, it can be in a room and not make anything stink or, you know. Yeah, you don't know. The mop is an easy way to clean fast and efficiently. The portable pencil sharpener made by John L. Love is good for sharpening pencils without using a knife and not risking cutting yourself. The next one, potato chips, might sound weird, but... John Crumb created it so that it's an easily compacted food source for going out and not getting yourself dirty when eating it that much. Protective mailbox, not everybody has it, but Phil B. Dolan was thinking about something so that everybody can have a way to get it without getting stolen by other people. Clothes dryer, dry your clothes, simple and short. That's fun. To pick up dust, as the name suggests. Lawn more to clean your lawn as easy and efficient as anyone would do without cutting your hands. A colour is small, and it will cut your hands. Ah. And last but not least, the window cleaner to clean the windows. Thank you, people. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Ra. There are a lot of things invented by us, yeah? But a lot of us do not know. And I think that's one of the reasons why institutes like applied technology is critical, right? Um, it highlights and showcases and in terms of upbringing wise, use your creative geniuses that is within, right? But like anything else, it's a seed that is planted and you need to be watered, right? Nobody is better than you regardless of their skin color, so forth and so on. Everything requires hard work, yeah? So if you're willing to put in the hard work, guess what? You can achieve, you see what I'm saying? So, Applied Technology, thank you all for coming, right? Next, we're going to have Astar. So, Brother Yao, we're going to talk a little bit about Astar. Thank you. Brother Yao, give it up for Brother Yao, man. He, he made this whole program. Him, Brother OG, Sister Patience, they made this program possible. You know what I mean? Without these people, you wouldn't be here. Give it up for my God. Yes. Great family. How's everybody? Marcus Garvey represents a phenomenon, something that happened a hundred years ago. At the time, black people were just coming out of the enslavement period. So you let two million people out or ten million people out with no jobs, no land, they were forced to create their own business. They were forced to create their own jobs. So Marcus Garvey at that time noted that nothing belonged to us. We didn't have any ships. We had to be working for white people. So guess what? 102 years later, we're in the same position, family. When you graduate from school, you go looking for a job. Most of you want to go outside, right? And the reason for that is we do not manufacture, we do not support our own business. So we end up buying white rice from where? Where do you buy your rice from? Thailand. Vietnam. But we have rice right here in Ghana. We have fertile land right here in Ghana. So if you do not support your own, what will happen? What's going to happen? Collapse. Huh? I can't hear you. Thank you So, Astar is a company that believes in promoting 
made in Africa products or goods or services made by black people or Africa or products made in the in the diaspora African diaspora so King please remember the phone the, the So, did you know that next door to Ghana, there's a country called Benin? Anybody heard of Benin? Yes. Guess what? Benin makes phones. Mm -hmm. Benin makes smart watches. They make mm -hmm. smart glasses. Wow. But, but yeah, exactly. But no one, ever, most of you never heard of that. Yeah. Here's another company called Mara. Ever heard of Mara? No. Made in Africa. Made by black men. Mara phone is comparable to any Chinese made phone but we do not know about it. More importantly, because we make our own phones, we employ our own people. So it employs 11,000 people. So, if you don't listen to anything else I say today, remember this. The main reason why I want you young people to be here today, I don't care if it's uh, 100 or 1,000 of you, I want you to remember this. The money is in entrepreneurship. You should not leave, graduate, and think you want to work for government. It's not going to happen. You know what? In 2050, 28 years' time, you're going to have 450 youths in Africa. 450 million of you. Because you're the most, you represent the most youth in the world. 80% of the world's youth population is in Africa. What's going to happen if you do not have your own business, your own jobs? You're going to get up in the morning, sit out, and sit out on the sidewalk? It has to change. So I'm encouraging each and every one of you young people, like we have with Sister Patience. She developed a, uh, uh, she innovated a stove, but with the stove, we have our own fuel. You don't need to drag your, your um, gas cylinder around with you. So she's a young person, but she innovate, her and her team innovated a fuel called Echo Fuel made from ethanol. You do not just have to invent things, you can improve on things, right? So, this is a picture of Garvey, if you've never seen him before. And because of him, I think Abeku told you, the black star in your flag is because of him. All the liberation movements that occurred around late 50s, in the 60s, is because of this man and the people who support him, including his wife. We always talk about the men, but behind the men, or in front of the men sometimes. So Amy Jack is his wife. And they both led him. In New York, 1919, they had their own soldiers, their own nurses. The world had never seen that before. They were shocked. And because of what he represents, the countries in Europe would not let him come. England would not let him come into the country. Why? Because of his ideas. So, I'm saying to you, young people in particular, get involved in robotics. Ben, he's over there, he'll present. He's a master robotics coding teacher. He has taken six young ladies, women, and we want to talk about women, to the international competition U.S., Canada, the great China, and beat all of them. Mm. Not just once, twice. Your own Ghanaian brother. Now, normally, someone with this talent, he would leave Ghana and go work outside. Saudi Arabia's calling him. U.S. wants him. We decide he wants to stay here in Ghana and help support our own people. So ASTAR promotes and support anyone who wants to be independent, make your own, support your own. Now one more thing I'm going to say, they're going to do their own presentation. I have a family over here that I grew up with, the Merita Technology. And what I'm going to say again may shock you. Many of you have ideas. We need to support your ideas. So one of the components of this forum is if you have ideas, business, startup or existing and you need money, we have some people clock, we're going to hook them up on the, on the monitor upstairs and you present your ideas and we look to how we can match the business with the money.
It, it's not a one-time thing. Even after today, you can contact Astar and see how we can help you. So there's no excuse for young people. I ain't got no money. No, there's money out there. So, this Merita technology, Brother Kwabna, I don't know where he stepped out to, and his wife, built the company back in 1986. We all grew up together. We were in Florida. At that time, you had no smartphones. At that time, you couldn't even see each other on what you call video conference. Zoom, there's no Zoom. 1996. This brother was contacted by a major company in the U.S. You know, you know what telephone booths are? You don't see telephone booths anymore, right? But you used to go in the corner, start dial a number, you can talk to somebody. It's dead now because everybody has a smartphone. Well, 20 years before this, this brother had video booths. So you would go into a booth, touch a button, and you, your picture would show up, and you can talk to whoever is waiting. That was 20 years ago. This is a young brother. He was in his 20s them times, young man. Brother Kwab, now come here, man. I'm proud of you. Right? Listen. If you are a great person, nobody needs to talk. You don't need to talk about yourself. Let someone else talk about you. That's right. So I can tell you, this humble brother, when, when AT&T wanted him to, all the white boys were asking him, how do you do this, how do you do that? He was telling them, the white boys ain't got nothing on him, the white people ain't got nothing on you. We are the original inventors, and up to today we're still inventing, but we do not get the support, and we do not support each other. You have to buy black, you have to support black. Kantanka, a great car. He did not start out to sell cars, he wanted to show that black people could make cars. But how much of us are supporting is, uh, uh, the car? We drive, we drive Toyota, we drive Hyundai, and all those companies were supported by the government. This man gets no support from, from Ghana government. So, again, my brother will be presenting, and after presenting, they'll be looking for young people to work in whatever business they're going to establish in. So again, young people, there's employment opportunities for you, there's encouragement for you, so you feel free to contact ASTAR, whatever we can do to help you, we invest in our youth. Last thing I'm going to say is, back there, you have a number of products on the table. Ghana has, how many heard of Tiger Nut? Raise your hand, Tiger Nut. Who knows the medicinal properties of Tiger Nut, what it does? No, they don't tell you these things, so, so quickly. Okay, bring up one of them, let me show you. We have, we have good services, young people, excellent, but we need to support and showcase. Okay, so this is Tiger Nut powder. This doesn't grow in, in, in UK or, or France or any of those countries. Right here in Ghana. Most men, as you get older, you will have prostate enlargement. It's just a fact of life. Your, your ureter will swell up. This will shrink it. I have a, and it, it could cause prostate cancer if you don't treat the issue I'm talking about. So, I have a friend, he'll be talking at, at two o'clock, Paul Pumphrey. He went to the United States, they told him that he had uh, prostate enlargement. He went to his white doctor, his white doctor gave him some medicine. One month later he came back, the doctor tested him. The prostate shrank by 75% in one month. So the doctor said, hey, you see my medicine work? He said, no, I didn't take your medicine. He said, what did you do? I said, he said, I took tiger nut. He said, tiger what? He said, tiger nut. This is something that if you, grown up, you want to sell it, farm it, promote it, this is an area where you can make a lot of money. Agriculture, get into agriculture. Don't worry about getting white collar jobs. Go into farming. It's next, where the next trillion dollar industry is. So, young family, however we can support you, we thank you for coming. But we're here for you to encourage you. Whatever is in your heart to do your passion, bring it out and let's support each other. Born were the days when everything was found on our soil, even till today. Is it the gold? Is it the oil? Is it the iron ore? The cobra? Is there anything that we can find in our soil? But the question again is, who controls this world? And where is our own black on everything? Where is it? Where can we find it? Who has it? 
who's keeping it? Who's controlling it? So a few years to come, trust me, these same people are transforming the world to the extent that technology is getting to a point where it was very difficult for most of us to be able even to find work to do. We know about artificial intelligence, we know about robotics, we know about machine learning, we know about internet of things, and these things are driving the world today. Who is behind these? And where are we? It is time to find where the black on everything is. It is time, and the time is now. So we have started changing the mindsets of little kids as young as three, four years, putting them into technology, finding new ways of thinking, finding new ways of collaborating, teamwork. So that we don't leave our generation behind. So we tried right from three years all the way to it's 18 years. We are keeping these children in all the emerging technologies. Because whether we like it or not, if we have to dig our gold and drill our oil, we still need these technologies. We've made too much noise. We've shouted a lot all over. It is time to be quiet and identify skills, identify what we can do to help the next generation. We have to stop talking. We have to start acting. And the time is now. I call upon all my black people all over the world, everywhere they are, in every corner of this world. It is time to look back home. It is time to look at the little kids, what each and everyone is doing, and let's start investing in them. All right. So today, uh, what we want to do is we want to uh, describe something that we've been working on that we believe is going to transform how we live here in Ghana, how we live in Africa. Um, we've been working on a project for six years now. We've been putting our own creativity into it, our own money into it, our own time into it, our own passion into it. And the, the background, I'll do the background of this. The background of this is that we, we, we used to live in uh, Kenya. And when you get out on the road in Kenya and drive, it's crazy. People are trying to drive over you. You have an accident. You try to call the police. Nobody comes. Uh, there's all types of confusion because of the way people drive in Kenya. So we came together and we put our minds together and we said, how can we change the situation? How can we help Kenya uh, with these terrible road conditions? So we determined that we were going to make an app, right? And so whenever you're driving, if you see somebody driving crazy, you take a picture with the app and then somehow maybe police would get that picture, they would they would get the license plate of the individual and then, you know, they could address that. So we did that, but we kept on thinking more and more, how could we make this better, right? Maybe it's not even uh, traffic, maybe it's fire, right? Maybe there's a fire and somebody doesn't know which number to call. So we added a feature to be able to support fires. Then we added more and more features. Because I'm speaking to young people, um, what I want to say is we took our own time, we took our own energy, we took our own initiative to look at a problem, to figure out how we can do something to help that problem. And we even spent our own money to do it. We invested in ourselves. There was nobody to teach us what we didn't know. So things that we didn't know, we either had to invent it ourselves or we had to go out and learn it on our own. Um, so before I hand it over to my wife, what I want to say to the young people is that there's nothing in your current situation now. Once you have a mind, you're able to read, you're able to understand for yourself. There's nothing in your current situation now 
that prevents you from creating your own solution to a problem. As you know, some cities, we've lived in about four countries, and we've traveled to quite a few more <laughs> across the continent. And um, one of the things that we do notice is that there is no, um, in, in many countries, not everywhere, but in many countries, you do not have a central emergency system um, provider. So I, some of you may have been know that in the US, you dial 911 when there's an emergency. So if someone's breaking in your house or um, you're hurt, you dial this one number and there, the responder, the operator, then figures out what the problem is and routes you to that specific um, service provider. So if it is the police or if it might be the um, hospital or the fire department, but you know that your call is going to be routed. Now, as he said, um, we lived here in Chalagotri uh, years ago. And um, it was challenging sometimes when I needed to reach uh, a medical provider. Um, in in uh, Ethiopia and in Ghana, um, in uh, Kenya, it's very similar. You have to know the police station number to call. Um, and I found that not, that's not very efficient because most of the time when you're in a, a urgent or an emergency situation, sometimes you don't even remember your own name. Um, and so we've had someone break into our home while we were there. And I didn't know what phone number to call. Um, so we decided no, as he said, it started with the road accident. Um, I've been in an accident and the, the driver that hit my car came over and was trying to open my door. And I don't know what he was going to do to me if he got in my vehicle. And so this is something that it's um, heavily driven by um, situations that we've experienced. And so it, that's what makes us a good team because um, I'm not a software developer. However, I work closely with him. And so I can come up as someone that's been in a situation to say to him, you know, it would have been good if, we, we, if I could do this or if I had that. And um, so this interaction and the experience we've had um, has driven a lot of the development process. Now, it is, he said it, it's taken over six years. We've actually had that idea for a longer time. Um, one of the things I'll let you know, for those who are going to be entrepreneurs, it's a long road. Um, you have to sacrifice your own time and money because no one's paying you for it. I take one and leave for the other hand. Yes! Baby girl, you know you love this day, you know, make a run for her. So I got to sing this song, so you make me So I'm going to have that baby room.
co-founder for Equinexus Ventures and Equinexus uh, we are into the production of um, eternal based gels for cooking so, so basically we promote clean cooking uh, yeah in the sub region yeah so exactly so what we are uh, promoting is uh, six to replace LPG and then charcoal a liter of the gel um, for burns at max for eight hours yeah and so it means that um, when you bring it from like mid tempo to a minimum it will go beyond the eight hours for one liter then the one liter of the liquid ethanol too is around the same figure like it's it's they're all alcohol based so that's it yeah. okay so currently we have some properties at in Sawam, others so uh, Kwabinya, Katapo and different parts of Accra. So um, actually, as I presented earlier on, uh, we are a real estate company that is seeking to offer nothing but affordable but, and unique uh, houses for uh, Ghanaians and other people like Africans or diasporans, or anybody who wants to settle in Ghana. So basically, that's what we are doing. And also, we currently have an upcoming project as the Echo Park. Uh, as it's an uh, eco-friendly industrial park where companies can come and rent spaces and manufacture their products and everything but it's going to be 100% um, powered by renewable energy and it's going to be eco-friendly as well yeah currently we also have a real estate um, project going on in, uh, that is upcoming in, in Saom and we've been in existence not for more than 15 years and we've been doing this yeah we have um uh, organic hair care products that are made from our natural and traditional organic ingredients we have uh, our deep conditioner made from shea butter we have shampoos that are made from our organic um, black soap yeah we have um, um hair growth oils made from our own coconuts over here coconut oils these oils are really beneficial for hair growth so we use these oils we put it together and then we give you perfect hair growth oils we also have shea butter cream smells so good and it's made with shea butter organic shea butter and cocoa butter with um our oils this local oils we have custard oil we have um, coconut oil these are oils and butters and soaps that we've had in africa for quite some time now that are very good that have been neglected so we are bringing back all these amazing products our, our, our principal yes. media sponsor in the house yes. put your hands together for dntv we may not have been born here but we have come home Right. We have come home! Let me see your hands! We have come home! What, is that all I can get? Is that all I can get? I'm coming off the stage right now. Alright? Well, I want to thank Baydu Village for allowing us the opportunity to be in their space. Baydu Village! Give Baydu Village a round of applause! Secondly, I want to thank our sponsors. I can't call all their names, but if you look at the banner, you will see all their names on the, on the banner. Thirdly, I want to thank our patrons who came out to support us in this maiden voyage. The first ever Where is a Black Owned Everything event. We have been doing RBG for three years now. But my leader... Yeah, we have our issues, but we are brothers in the struggle and we will move forward and be even more powerful. This is the first time we have taken this to the level of business. It's an expensive venture, but anytime you want good, as Jamaican people say, you know us have to run. Anybody understand what that means? If you want good, you know us have to run. So if you want to build something good, you have to spend. There's going to be a little bit of struggle along the way, but we have to work our way through it and make sure we do good. So let me say 